What's up guys and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about this. This is the Armaton Tadpole. I've been all in my bag. You been all in my business. You be all in your feelings. I've been all in them trenches. I've been all in my bag. You be all in my business. No, they notice me. Isn't it so cute? It's just a tiny little frame. This is Armaton's newest frame. It's basically supposed to be a toothpick style frame or that class of frame, I guess. So it'll fit 65 millimeter props and basically like 11 series motors, I believe is what it's meant to fit is I'm using an 1103. It fits a nano camera and it fits a 16 by 16 stack, but you can also use an adapter to fit the whoop boards. And today I'm not really gonna do a full on review of the frame. Basically, I just wanna do a build video of the, of the tag pole with the iFlight 16 by 16 stack. That's what I'm going to be using on the frame. It's a three layer stack. It's your ESC 4-in-1, a flight controller, and a VTX all in one stack. And I will be doing a review on the frame in the future as well as the 16 by 16 iFlight stack that I'll be using. I'll be doing them separately and I will have some coupon codes for the iFlight stack. If any of you guys are interested in purchasing the stack, I will have some coupon codes for that. So basically the parts I'm using, like I said, these are the iFlight 1103-8000 KV motors with the iFlight stack. The This is the Runcam Nano 2, I believe. And then I'm gonna be using, I have my little box of parts here, the Crossfire Nano receiver. And then I also purchased this little antenna from TBS. This is one of the little race antennas. It's supposed to be about, it's not gonna focus. It's supposed to be about the equivalent range of a 2.4 gigahertz system. And it's really tiny. I didn't want to put an Immortal T on something this small because weight is kind of a concern. So, so I ordered this little tiny antenna separately and I'm gonna probably mount that under the arm. The frame also comes with some little cute battery straps, but I ordered some separate ones from Pyro just in case. Basically, I was just ordering stuff and I need to get to that $50 limit so I could get some free shipping. So I threw in some battery straps. And then I'm using, these are the HQ props. These are 65 millimeter. The iFlight motors were supposed to come with holes so that you could bolt the motors on, but mine didn't. It, I swear it showed them in the picture and I saw a guy on Facebook that got some with holes and some without. So luckily I got these props which fit the 1.5 millimeter shaft without screws. And then these are some really old batteries that I had for my old flight test Gremlin. This was like one of the first batteries I ever bought. It's an 800 milliamp hour 2S battery with a JST connector. So that's why I ordered a bag of JSTs so I can use these old batteries on it. And I hope the JST isn't an issue. I know the stack comes with an XT30, but I'm gonna be using the JST. I don't think it'll be a problem on something this small. So that's basically everything that I'm using. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and start building this thing. And one thing I wanna note about the motors is the screws that come with the motors are too, sh well, they're too long. The five millimeter M2 bolts are too long for this frame that they touch the coils in the motors. And I tried threading an M2 nut onto the screws to kind of recess them a little bit. And those were, pretty much too short it just barely grabbed and they also come with a seven millimeter screw and when I threaded the nut onto those that were still too long and they touched the coil so basically I had to find my own four millimeter bolts and those seem to work just about perfectly so keep that in mind if you're using these 1103s um, I'm not sure what other motors come with but I basically had to use my own screws so keep that in mind if you're using these motors you may have to source your own bolts I get all mine from Bolt Depot in bulk you can get them 12.8 steel for like dirt cheap they're just super cheap so that's where I get all my stuff from in case you guys need anywhere to get your bolts from and I'm also going to be conformal coating all of the parts that I'm using because we just got more snow last night we've already gotten like inches of snow so basically no matter where I fly this thing there's going to be a lot of snow so I am going to be conformal coating these components as I go okay so again with the lengths of bolts basically I I'm just gonna recommend right off the bat that you go ahead and source like a bunch of M2 bolts in all sorts of different lengths for this frame because the stack screws that come with it, uh, they touch the top plate and the top plate is actually slanted. So the screws you need for the back of the stack need to be a little shorter. When I put the stack in between the frame, it's literally just being sandwiched in between the top and bottom plate. So I don't know, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get a nut on top of this stack, but well, I literally, I put a nut under each of the screws and that made them just long enough to clear the top plate. And yeah, I literally had to dig through my tray of miscellaneous bolts, you know, when you're a kid and you dig through your bucket of Legos looking for that one Lego that you need for everything. That's what it was like. I had to, I used to have my sh 
together and I had a nice organized box full of bolts and all sorts of different lengths because I bought them in bulk. But now it's just kind of a disaster and a mess so it took me a little while to find them. So I would just recommend buying some bolts for this frame in all sorts of different lengths because the way the top plate is slanted on it, it's going to call for some odd length bolts. Basically what I did is I, I cut the soft mounts on the bottom of the ESC and I'm gonna use an M2 nut at the very bottom of the stack versus using the soft mounts because uh, that saves me like a millimeter of height. So I'm just trying to scrape away everything I can. But otherwise, as far as the spacing in between each board goes, you can't really go any less because of the pins that connect the boards together. So really the only thing you can do is lower the bottom of the stack and hope that you can get some, some sort of nut on top of the stack when you're done, which we'll see if it works out like that. But anyway, I just conformal coated the bottom of the ESC because you wanna conformal coat the bottom of each component before you install it, then solder all your wires to the top of it, and then conform will coat the top of it, then put the next layer on. We're gonna go ahead and start soldering components on. Okay, so I ended up just removing the soft mounts from the ESC altogether, and I'm just gonna use an M2 nut because it's about the same height, it's a little bit different, but it should work just fine instead of using the soft mount on the ESC. And then the flight controller still has the full grommets all the way through the flight controller. So the flight controller will still be soft mounted and that's what's important. So we're gonna go ahead and start tinning and soldering these pads. And I just use a basic flux pen, just a cheapo one off Amazon and your Armaton solder. All right, so I've applied flux to the pads and we're gonna go ahead and tin our power and ground and our motor wires. Like it'll be long enough. If not, we got 20 more we can use. So now we have the motor wires soldered up to the ESC. These are like some of the tiniest wires I've ever soldered as far as motor wires especially. If you're a beginner builder, I would almost have a buddy that knows what they're doing help you with this because these pads are so small. I've bridged a bunch of pads and capacitors like a couple times now. So it is difficult just because everything is so small. So if you're new and this is like your first build, I would definitely look for a buddy to try to get some help by soldering all this stuff up. I mean, there's not a whole lot of soldering because the whole stack basically has pins in between each between each layer, but there is some soldering as far as the motor wires, the camera, and the receiver, obviously. So anyway, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and continue up the stack. I gotta put some M2 nuts uh, to fasten down the ESC, and then we will put the flight controller on top and continue. And I also have to conform we'll coat the top of the ESC also before we put the flight controller on. Okay, now the ESC is installed, so we're gonna go ahead and install the flight controller on top of the ESC, just lining the pins up as they're supposed to be. So it looks like we might get two nuts on top of the foot, on top of the VTX, but two of these holes are probably just gonna have pressure on them from the top plate. So it'll fit, but it's gonna be really tight. So that's how you get the iFlight stack to fit in this frame. Anyway, let's pull the VTX off. We're gonna go ahead and solder the camera on first because I've had this little camera plug kind of just in my way this entire time. Okay, so it looks like the camera plugs into this little plug up here. And since that's the same plug that's on here, I'm basically just gonna spool this up and kind of tuck it behind the camera just because I don't want to have to, I could shorten it up, but I don't wanna to have to have a bunch of this stuff soldered and have heat shrink over it. I'd rather just have them be solid connections. So I'm just gonna kind of spool this up and put a zip tie around it and tuck it up in front here. So that's kind of convenient that the camera just plugs right in. It's kind of annoying. Oh, there's a bunch of extra slack, but we can zip tie that up down here. 
we'll solder our receiver on and that'll pretty much be all of the soldering. So I'm gonna go ahead and conformal coat the bottom of the flight controller. Okay, and you also need to note when you're building this with the iFlight stack that there is a version one and version two of the flight controllers. If you look on pyrodrone.com, you can find both diagrams, but basically just look at the pads on your board and it'll be obvious to see which one you have, but the wiring is a little different between the two. So make sure you check the board that you have before you start soldering components to the flight controller because there is two different versions. So that's what I'm gonna do now and look up which one I have. Okay, so on this version of the board I'm going to be using the ground the 5 volt RX2 and then this pad is TX2 and that's what I'm going to be using for my crossfire receiver again this will be different depending on which flight controller you have so I am only going to solder those four pins up then go ahead and get my nano uh, receiver ready All right, now we have our four wires uh, soldered up to our crossfire receiver. So now all we have to do is go ahead and conformal coat this, put some heat shrink around it. And then I usually just put some sticky tape down, sticky tape it, and then wrap a zip tie around it. Now I'm just gonna cut a little piece of sticky tape, put it under the crossfire. Okay, so now I have the receiver sticky taped down to the frame and I just put it kind of right over that little bar there, right there. That way I can get a zip tie around it after I'm done. And so basically now we really just have to solder up these receiver wires and that's pretty much it for soldering. So let's go ahead and get these soldered up. So our first one is ground. All right, and now my receiver is all soldered up. I have the battery soldered up, the motor wire soldered, and the camera plugged in, and that's really all there is to it. The rest of the stuff just basically connects via pins in between the two boards, like so. And now I think I'm gonna take this antenna and I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna have to like maybe mount it like that under the arm. It comes with some little sticky tape. I'll have to mount it somewhere, maybe over here. I don't know, so. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish conformal coating all this stuff and then we can jump over to the computer and do our little setup on the beta flight and then I will do a motor test. So let's just go ahead and time lapse through the rest of the conformal coating process and putting the VTX on the stack. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. But look at that. It just barely clears. So yeah, we'll get one nut on top of that and that's pretty much gonna be it. All right, so pretty much all that's left really is I'm just gonna add some zip ties around the motor wires, add a zip tie to the receiver and then somehow spool all this excess wire up for the camera, zip tie it all together and stuff it in behind the camera and then mount my antenna. And really this stuff is gonna be different for all you guys depending on the stuff that you're using. But um, yeah, that's basically the gist of how to install the iFlight stack. Really, you just solder your motor wires, solder your receiver on the back, plug in your camera, and the rest of the components just click together with little pins between the boards. So that's really it. So now that we're done with the building portion of it, or mostly done, we're gonna jump over to Betaflight and I'm gonna show you guys how to set up this stack in Betaflight. We're gonna test the motors, make sure everything works, and that's gonna wrap up this video. Okay guys, so this video got way longer than I expected it to, so we're not gonna go super in detail about like how to flash the firmware or change motor directions and things like that because there are a lot of videos out there on doing that stuff. So basically I just wanna show you how easy it is to set up the Betaflight on the Tadpole. So basically you just connect your USB to the flight controller on the side here. So your COM port should automatically pop up and then you're gonna connect. If you wanna flash the firmware, you can, I didn't. I just left it on what it was, but if you do wanna flash the firmware, I believe this is the target up here that you're gonna to wanna to go for. 
And so you don't really need to worry about this page unless you want to calibrate your accelerometer if you're going to be flying in angle mode. The ports are basically set up already exactly how they're supposed to be. There's only two UARTs and one is used for the tram telemetry, which is your smart audio. And that's connected automatically between the VTX and the flight controller. And then you have your serial RX set to UART2 because there's only one UART dedicated to your serial RX. And so when we move on to configuration, I left most of this stuff at the defaults. I left it at DSHOT 600 like it's supposed to be. I left all this stuff alone. I set my gyro and PID loop rate to 8K, 8K. I always set my max arming angle to 180 that way. Even if I'm like on, on level ground, I can still arm the quad or I could even disarm and rearm midair if for some reason I had to. Uh, you can name your quad if you want to and then your receiver, you're basically just gonna pick which type of receiver you're using. I'm using Crossfire, so I selected that. And then the only thing I did was turned off air mode because I like to have that on the switch but otherwise the rest of this should all be set up exactly how it should. D shot beacon configuration I just set it to RX lost and RX set so that way I can have a beeper on a switch and then I turn off the rest of this stuff. Your power and battery you can also leave all that stuff alone because that's all set up how it's supposed to be and then this is your PIDs obviously a lot of people are going to set up their rates however they like and then set up your PIDs I don't know I know some beta flight has some presets for like little quads like this I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at the D defaults and see how it goes and same with the filters I'm just going to go ahead and leave those at the default if I feel like there could be some improvement in performance and latency and whatnot then I can come by and turn these down or even turn them off if I wanted to and then in your receiver setting you're just going to set your channel map I set mine to TAER because I'm using mode one and then I set my crossfire to channel eight because uh, that way I have my RSSI displayed in my OSD and this is modes this is where you're going to set up your switches for arming and your buzzer I like to have air mode on a switch and then I have uh, turtle mode set to aux 4 which would be my force switch and in the motors tab this is where you will test your motors basically you just want to uncheck this box make sure you do not have props connected or they will chop you up and then you just connect the battery and that's it and then again with the OSD this is going to be kind of a personal preference I like to have my RSSI my voltage if I had current readout I would have my milliamps drawn and the current drawn at the bottom here but since you only get voltage I just have the voltage there disarmed RSSI uh, my flight mode and a timer so that's pretty much it for the beta flight setup the only other thing you would need to do is if your motors are spinning the wrong direction you would need to go into BL heli suite and change the motor directions which there's tons of videos out there on how to do that so that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video just two things I wanted to touch back on uh, again with the bolts the m2 bolts before you order the frame I would just go ahead and order anywhere between like four millimeter to like 16 to 18 millimeter bolts that way you just have a bunch of different lengths and you don't have to worry about cutting screws or adding nuts to them to make them a little shorter so that's my recommendation is just to order a whole bunch of bolts so that you don't have to worry about that in the building process and then the other thing i cannot stress enough is to double check your wiring on pyro drone make sure you have the correct version and triple check the pads triple check the diagrams because i even screwed that up everything was working my controller was fine but for some reason beta flight wasn't getting any it wasn't getting anything from my sticks and it turned out I'd hooked my what was supposed to go to the RX pad to the NR2 pad which is not R2 it's NR2 there's two different pads they look the same just make sure you double check which one you have so you don't damage anything by hooking stuff up wrong so otherwise that's going to wrap it up so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe and if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments but otherwise I will see you guys on the next one thanks for watching you be all in my business you be all in your feelings I been all in them trenches, I been all in my bag, you be all in my business, know they notice me flexing, fit in all of my fitness.